So can we have an honest conversation here for a minute about Syria? Okay, let's just follow me through with this. Assad with the Russians have beat ISIS. They have beat the American-supported rebels, whoever the hell the rebels actually are or were. Our government doesn't even know. I mean, don't take my word for it. Hop on Google and just do a quick search about the Syrian opposition. Who are they? No one really knows. Our government doesn't know. Doesn't. Think about this. In Obama's term, our military was arming and training Al-Qaeda. Chew on that one for a minute. I mean, the whole reason I bring that up, like I said just a moment ago, Assad is one. The rebels have been crushed. Russian air power has decimated them. And I guess I have really one enclave left, which is completely surrounded by the Syrian army. A place called Gupta, I guess it's outside of Damascus. So last week, President Trump says, you know, with Syria pretty much mopped up, Assad's not going anywhere, it's time to bring the 2,000 soldiers home, which 99.9% .9 of the U.S. population didn't even know were there. Now, after Trump made that announcement, Lindsey Graham and the Republican neocons went mental. The Democrat war hawks lost their minds because Trump said, what we're going to do is that we're going to bring those 2,000 soldiers home and we're going to put them on the U.S.-Mexico border in lieu of the, of the border wall, which I think we got screwed on anyway, but that's, that's a topic for another video. So let's see what happens since then. Keep in mind, this is less than a week. There was a fire in Trump Tower. And now all of a sudden... There was a chemical attack in the rebel enclave of Gupta in which innocent women and children were killed. And, of course, Assad is responsible. Except there's been absolutely zero verification on it. And it's on the record. It is a matter of record that the rebels have used chemical weapons in the past. Now, let me ask you this. This is kind of like... A mental exercise, but it's one I'm, I'm fairly certain that a four-year-old child would be able to work through. Okay, you, you're a sod. Put yourself in, in his place. You're sitting in your presidential palace in Damascus. The last enemy stronghold is completely surrounded. You have won. The major backer of your opposition is going to withdraw. Why in the hell would you use chemical weapons at that point against a population that you've already beaten. Because you know what it's going to do. It's going to give the backers of your opponents, the United States, a reason to stay, and odds are they're going to attack you. Why would you do it? There would be absolutely zero reason to do it. I submit to you that this is a false flag attack. I submit to you it was done by the rebels in that enclave. I submit to you that the deep state knows exactly what's going on here. And that they are using this to keep, to force Trump to keep soldiers in Syria. You know, back in 2013, Trump tweeted out a, a tweet condemning any kind of U.S. action in Syria. Saying it was stupid, and he's absolutely right. It's stupid to be there today, Mr. President. And here's something else to think on. There are thousands of Russian soldiers and airmen in Syria, invited by the legal and legitimate government of that country. If in these attacks... If we inadvertently kill or wound any Russians, 
Vladimir Putin, the president of Russia, a nuclear power, a major world power, has said he will retaliate. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think there's a whole lot of future in a world that's post-nuclear apocalyptic because that's exactly what would happen. Are we really, really willing to risk nuclear war over Syria? Some backwater shithole in the Middle East that the vast majority of Americans have never even have never been to? I dare say that most of the Tide Pod eating millennials couldn't even show you where it is on a map. We're going to risk nuclear war for that. You know, I, I supported Trump actively in the campaign because I knew that Hillary Clinton wanted a war with Russia and Trump time and time and time again said, we're better off having Russia as a friend than as an enemy. We can work together. And now here, here's President Trump doing his absolute best to get us into a shooting war with Russia. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. I'm going to close with this thought and just think about this. Let's just say for sake of argument, South Korea and North Korea were shelling each other, doing air raids, nothing, no major ground offensives, but just a, a bunch of skirmishing along the DMZ. Suppose what would happen if the Chinese or the North Koreans launched a, an air raid and mistakenly bombed a U.S. position and U.S. soldiers were killed in that strike. What do you think our response would be? I pretty much guarantee you our response would be. Let's put the show on the other foot. What happens if our government kills a couple hundred Russians by accident in Syria? Putin's already said what he's going to do. You know, there are some reports out there on the internet that 300 Russians have already been killed by the United States military in accidental attacks. tell you. Things are not looking good for the future, my friends. They are not looking good. We have got to get engaged. We've got to get engaged. you got to call your congressmen and your senators. You've got to write letters to your editors. You've got to make videos like this. You've got to talk with your friends. I know it's going to be uncomfortable. Trust me, I know it. I know it. But you know what? Hurt feelings today, it's been glowing like a fluorescent light bulb in the future.